Now, I know for our podcast listeners, they're not able to see this, but for YouTube, you have a poster to show us and to walk uh, mm -hmm. us. Can you show us a bit of that yeah. about it? Okay, so, um, so the way a poster gets put together is there are new, there's a new opening. Let's say there's a new opening or a new job. So a manager wants to hire someone. Oh, what are you seeing right now? Are you seeing the poster? Yeah. Okay, great. So when a new job gets created, there's a work description that goes along with that new job. And in that work description, you're going to find, you know, what are the services that that person has to perform? What are the key activities that that person needs to perform or the key skills that they need to have? So a manager will use the work description to yeah. create something called a SOMC. So a SOMC is an acronym for a statement of merit criteria. And essentially, the statement merit of criteria is a list of things that the manager is going to look for to make sure that that person can perform the jobs on the work description. Yeah. So that statement merit of criteria becomes a poster. So this is, I'm going to just move it so I can read it too. So I've given an example here of a poster for a procurement specialist. So you can see my screen, okay? I can. Okay, great. So this is a poster very similar that you're gonna find when you go on jobs.gc.ca. And this poster is gonna tell us all the information that we need to prepare for that job. Yeah. So these reference numbers are um, sort of irrelevant to you. However, it's gonna help you keep track of which posters you've applied for. So sometimes procurement specialists will show up in multiple posters and that process number is key because um, it's gonna follow through the entire uh, process. So make sure you, you keep track of this selection process number because if you wanna contact HR or you wanna contact a manager or you wanna keep track of what you've applied to, yeah. that's gonna be your unique identifier. Okay. So in this header is one of the most important parts. It's going to tell you who are you, who's looking for it. So here in this case, we have the RCMP and here is the division and the groups that's hiring. So it looks like it's a procurement material and asset management team within corporate management within the RCMP. And then they're giving you the address of work. They're also giving you the classification here. So this is a poster for a PG3. So PG is the procurement group level three. Mm -hmm. And then it's telling you here whether it's an acting, a deployment yeah. or an indeterminate. So all of these are different kinds of jobs. So there's a whole conversation that we could have about what all of those are. Yeah. It's giving you a salary range. And if you're ever interested in, um, you know, classifications and salary range, you can type in in Google like TBS PG3 pay scale. Yeah. And it's actually going to bring you to publicly available information on how much is a PG1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 make so that you can get an idea of salary ranges. Mm -hmm. So notice this big, huge, bold, black. So that's super important because you want to make sure that you're submitting your application before that deadline. Yeah. And the system will automatically shut it down. So there are no extensions. Mm -hmm. Unless there may be some, you know, circumstances where they would allow it, but um, they're pretty strict on this. Here, it's who can apply. So it's going to tell you that in this case, it's a person already employed at the RCMP mm -hmm. occupying a position. And so that's important persons employed in the public service who are already employed in the NAC. Yeah. So what this is telling me is a member of the public wouldn't be able to apply. This is really someone who's already working for the RCMP or already working for the public service mm -hmm. in the NCR. Right. So there's your apply online button. So all of this information here at the top of posters is gonna give you some details, information about how to apply, you know, what kind of job it is, where are you gonna be working? So this is information for you. So the intent of the process, again, it's gonna give you some information on why they're hiring, who they're hiring. And then they're gonna tell you here that this one position being filled. So they have an immediate need. They have a vacancy of one position. Mm -hmm. 
So information you must provide, your resume, super helpful. And then here is where the SOMC, the Statement Merit of Criteria comes into play. So the Statement of Merit Criteria will say, this is the kind of education that you need. In this case, you only need a secondary school diploma. It's also going to tell you about the kind of experiences that you need. Mm -hmm. So the experiences is what they're going to be looking at on your resume. So resumes get evaluated using um, your resume and, and a questionnaire that they might ask you to fill out. Okay. So sometimes when you click apply, it'll bring you to a questionnaire mm -hmm. and it'll say, do you have a secondary school diploma? Your answer, yes, I have a secondary school diploma from this school, which I obtained on this date. So you're proving it. You're, mm -hmm. So you can't just say, yes, I have it. Prove to us that you have it by giving us detailed information. Mm -hmm. Next questions could be about your experience. So they'll say, do you have recent and significant experience in preparing, evaluating, awarding, managing goods and or service contract and or construction contract and or <laughs> contract. So these and ors, ultra important. You wanna keep track of them because if it's or, it could be any one of those and you're it. If it's and, it means it has to be all of those yeah. and you're in. And when you're answering the question, do you have experience? You have to show it. So don't assume that just because on your resume, it says, I worked in asset management. Don't assume, you cannot make any assumptions that someone will know and link that sentence on your resume mm -hmm. to this requirement. Mm -hmm. You have to explain it. You have to provide the details. Where were you working? For how long were you working there for? Mm -hmm. um, actually, in fact, see these little stars? They're telling you right here. Yeah. For me, recent experience means it has to be within the last five years. So again, don't rely on your resume. It's, you have to say. It's one of those things that, you know, common knowledge is can be uncommon, right? It's common to you, but not yeah. to someone else. Absolutely. Yeah. So. No, and this is the error that most people do. They get screened out very often right at the get-go because they didn't explain it in the last five years. You have to say from this state to this state, I worked at this place and here is how I meet the experience. Mm -hmm. Be very clear. Like it has to be in your face. Yeah. You know, like it has to be just so clear that your, you know, 10 year old can read it and they can understand it. Mm -hmm. So, oh, go ahead. No, no, I just, I, I'm just picturing uh, an in, uh, in, someone filling it out and showing it to their 10 year old saying, hey, what do you think? Why not? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> if, they don't understand, if they don't understand it, there you not just well, you know, as a minimum, they, as a minimum, they should understand it. They yeah. should go, oh yeah, yeah. there's the dates. Mm -hmm. And yes, I see. Okay, so they might not understand <laughs> what fleet <laughs> management is. <laughs> That's a good point, but it's got to be plain enough, you yeah. know? Yeah. Um, so asset qualifications are um, kind of important to keep an eye on. So. It's not mandatory, so that's what that means. It means it's not mandatory, but if you had it, we might consider you above others. Okay. So that's why it's important to keep an eye out. Also, sometimes those competitions, you know, where I said, oh, there could be like a thousand resumes. Mm -hmm. If there are a thousand resumes, what they might say is screen everybody out who doesn't have asset qualifications so we can narrow the pool and really focus on the people who best meet. So the asset qualification might be used as a filter in the beginning of the process. Gotcha. Or, and or, or, it might be used as a justification for selecting that person at the end of the process. Mm -hmm. So let's say 500 people qualified which is a lot of people to pick from, 500 people. They might say, okay, out of all those people who are in the pool, qualified, pick out the people who have 
all of the asset qualifications or one of the asset qualifications or two of the asset qualifications. That's going to help them, again, narrow it down to people who will best fit the position. Mm-hmm. Wow. Does that make sense so far? Yeah, absolutely. It looks like this guy here, this position has so many asset qualifications. Holy moly. <laughs> Look at all of these are assets. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's great. What they're saying is, give me the biggest group of people possible with only these two things. Mm -hmm. And then later, We're I will use these things to, to navigate, to filter. Gotcha. Hmm. That's interesting. Yes. So education and experience typically get evaluated at the beginning of a competition. Mm -hmm. Your knowledge, so see how this guy over here, knowledge of policies and legal framework related to the federal government procurement, those will typically get evaluated through an exam, which can either be an exam at home yeah. or an exam right before your interview. Sometimes they really like to put the pressure on. Um, or the knowledge could be assessed directly into the interview in the way that they've structured the questions. Yeah. And then core competencies, again, can either be evaluated in the interview. Yeah. So they're going to see, okay, well, how did, when they answered that question, how did they think things through? So they might evaluate you then, or they might actually ask your references to evaluate you. Mm -hmm. So sometimes they'll say, can you tell me of a situation that was difficult and explain to me how you thought they, they thought things through. Yeah. Okay. Maybe I used thought too many times in that sentence. <laughs> <laughs> I think you I know what I mean. I always, those were the um, criteria that I had the hardest time with because I had to, mm -hmm. um, like, how do you think of describing yourself as thinking things through, right? How do you present that to an interview uh, party? And yes. it was just like, you know, I mean, it's like, come on, I always think things through, right? <laughs> but <laughs> It's intuitive. <laughs> you would think, you know, everyone does that, but it's like, how do I convey that to the job poster, right? So, yeah. I mean, that luckily for you, we have an open government policy. Yeah. So that information on what thinking things through means yeah. is actually publicly available. Okay. So TBS, and I'm going to see if it, that's the magic of doing things on a computer. Yeah. So if I go TBS core competencies and I plug that into Google, because Google is yeah. my best friend. Yeah. <laughs> Here, let's see if we can find... Uh, yeah, I'm gonna screen. I'm gonna share my screen mm -hmm. again with you. Please do. Here we go. All right. Do you see that? I do. Okay. So all I did is I typed in TBS competencies, and it brought me. Look at. It, do you recognize some of these? Create vision, strategy, mobilize people. Sometimes. These are competencies. In this case, it's a leadership competency. So those are things you would find in posters for supervisors, managers, directors, and so on. Yeah. But they are, they'll actually explain to you what those things mean. Mm -hmm. And they will actually tell you some of the things that they're looking for. So if I were to go, let's see, just gonna navigate a little bit. Yeah, this is perfect. This is exactly where we want to go. So here's a, co a core competency called create vision and strategy. And like you said, I kind of do it instinctively. Yeah. You know, I, I think I do. But how am I going to prove that in a conversation? Well, in in this section, I'll show you examples for a DM. Okay, so this is a little above our pay grade. <laughs> so let's, yeah. let's, go to, let's go to supervisor. <laughs> and let's make it a little just a little realistic for us. <laughs> okay, so as a supervisor, if you are applying for a supervisor position and they want you to demonstrate creating vision and strategy, which they'll actually tell you, TBS actually tells you what they're looking for. Informs analysis through understanding of the environment. Okay, so in my interview, I might say, 
well, the first thing I'm going to do is conduct an analysis of my environment, <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay, so you're you're showing that you understand what that means. Mm -hmm. In an interview, you typically want to use it as in an example. So you really enforce that you understand and that you've used it. Mm -hmm. So you could say like, you know, I was working on this project mm -hmm. and um, I didn't really know where to start. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I did is I did an analysis of my environment. I contacted my supervisors, I contacted the client, I tried to understand, you know, why was this project important? Yeah. And what were the objectives? Mm -hmm. You see? And then here's another one, works with others to implement concrete work activities. And so the next thing I might talk about is how I created an action plan. Yeah. You know, so TBS yeah. has- Is it up for you? It has all the, it wants you to succeed. The government wants people. <laughs> they want good people. It, it, we just know that you need direction on how to answer these questions. But all the information is there at, at TBS. They're going to tell you exactly how to answer these questions. Wow. That's great.